you saw the title, you know what we're doing here. <laughs> I was sent a bunch of Max Powder Kiss singles and the Powder Kiss liquid lip colors, a bunch of them. So I wanted to give them, give them their due, you know? Oh my God, I'm such a mess. <laughs> I always press record and then I'm like, oh yeah, there's stir everywhere. Let's hop right into this. I'm going to put, <laughs> classic, Pro Longwear Paint Pot on my eyelids to prime. Pretty clear to see that my vlogmas didn't go as planned. I ended up having a bunch of other paid work that I had to attend to and uh, I did get way more videos up than I have any other month this year. So that's something to be proud of. I have tried out, I think two, maybe one or two of these um, eyeshadows in my I think testing new makeup video. And I did like the formula already, but there's so many other good colors that I just want to test them out too. I'm going to start out with, so hot right now, so oat right now. This is a 210 blending brush from Fenty Beauty. I'm gonna work that into my crease. I have to say MAC has, from when I became a young adult, it was like, the end all be all. I get so excited waiting for their holiday collections every year. And I actually had an ex-boyfriend who was a stock boy at one of the Macs in town. And I traded him. I bought a new iPod shuffle, if you can remember those, and traded it, traded him for it. No, oh my gosh. For one of those Mac carrying cases for your makeup. I think at the time you could only get those if you were an employee there. Maybe I wanted his discount, I don't remember. Oh, two completely different eye shapes. Both of these eyes are very different. Like this one's a little bit more hooded than this one. So it's always interesting trying to even that out and make them look similar. Sometimes it just doesn't work, you know, and that's okay. Anyway, so there's something about MAC that just makes me very nostalgic and they still make pretty amazing products. Uh? Though I wish they were cruelty free, that'd be cool. I blend it out really, really easily. I am going to use Devoted to Chili next. This is the Sephora Precision Point Blending Brush. Darken up the crease down here. Anywho, I started listening to this podcast called La Do You Remember This? There's something that I just absolutely adore about early 2000s nostalgia and oh, oh, this side is not blending as nice, but no surprise there. I always have one eye that's just like <laughs> does its own thing and sometimes doesn't blend as nice. I don't know why. I'm super nostalgic for that time because while I was in high school in the, I graduated in 2005 and then I went to university and I was in fashion school around the same time that The Hills was happening. So naturally I felt like that show was somewhat mirroring my life despite many differences between <laughs> my life and theirs. Anywho, I found the show to be extremely relatable because I was in the same age bracket as them. Where am I going with this? Oh yeah, so Le Doux was a nightclub that, I mean, all of the hills and young Hollywood went to at the time. This podcast is like the early 2000s version of You Must Remember This, which is another one of my favorite podcasts. Oh my gosh, that was really easy. And I love these two colors together. But yeah, if you're looking for a podcast about pop culture and that's well-researched, I highly recommend Le Do You Remember This. I hit a wall with listening to true crime and just need to find things that, I don't know, are interesting and well-researched, but like not, not about violence against women right now. I just can't, I can't take it. Maybe it's cause I'm like going, <laughs> maybe it's cause I'm going to therapy. Am I just gonna keep mentioning therapy endlessly? Yes, probably. But yeah, it's too much for me right now. So I've been steering clear of that. Okay, moving on. We are going to use Strike a Pose. This is a Mac brush that I can't even read the number on anymore. I think it was from like seven years ago. 
I don't know if it's even available anymore. Seems as though people really prefer palettes these days. And I'm thinking the single shadow is ready for a comeback because it's time. Some people, myself included, really crave more simplicity in their life. <laughs> and when I'm traveling, just give me like a good brown color and like a single brown. And then I can just, I, I can just do that all over my eyes and then take my highlighter and just pop it on my lid and I'm like, good. This is an RMS brush, the 20E. It's not super precision-y, but I just wanted to get a bit of a gradient up there. Yeah, that'll work. Next up, Best of Me. A buxom brush for the smoky eye. I don't know. I also think that I would like to take this Give a Glam dark deep brown color and use it as an eyeliner. I've really been appreciating making eye looks and then not putting on fake eyelashes because realistically, I am not wearing false eyelashes on a normal day. Okay, these mattes are super easy to use. I like -y. Oh, this was a MAC 233 maybe? I got this in high school. Don't know if it's still. <laughs> like how all of my brushes are either like, oh, this is Fenty, you can still buy it, or this is MAC from 100 years ago. Good luck finding it. There's no in between. I mean, there is a bit, but not really. There's also these three really fun colors, which I don't think I'm gonna get to today, but this bright pink, I'm into that. Like this mauve -y color, and then like a red. Yeah, these would be a fun look. Not today though. Like I said, I think single shadows are due for a comeback, but that's just me. I'm gonna take So Oat right now again and go under my eyes. This is the Sonia Kashuk, no information, but it's kind of looking like a smudger brush. I got this on my last trip before. I'm pretty bummed that I won't be able to go to Arizona this year, but I also am grateful that my family and I am still healthy and alive. If my biggest problem is not being able to go on vacation, then I'm super, super lucky. And I'm going to go back with Devoted to Chili. You know, a good color for eyeliner with this would probably be is um, Pillow Talk, because it's got that ready brown color. When I first got it, I was like, hmm, don't know if I'll be using that. And since then I have used it quite a few times, which surprised me quite a bit. Ooh, Kidoki, I actually really like this uh, Sonia Kashuk brush that I bought and I don't know, took 10 months to use. <laughs> Whoopsie doodle. I already know that I like the formula of the lipsticks, so I will try on a couple of colors just for fun. Using the Pillow Talk eyeliner from Charlotte Tilbury to do a little bit of the outer corner, waterline, an upper waterline, and then of course, I'm such a broken record. It's like always the same couple of things. The Charlotte Tilbury, Iconic Liquid Eye Pencil, I Cheat. I just love the way that it looks. Ooh, I just find that for me it really opens my eye up. Like this versus this. All right, I've been loving the Honest Beauty mascara and I've been using it nonstop, which is surprising to me because I'm not usually into the rubbery, spiky brushes. So this is, this has been one of the first mascaras that I've actually enjoyed this one. Maybe that's because the mascara just applies so well and to my non-existent lashes and it's not chunky, which is usually my problem when the brushes are like this. Also, I'm able to do both eyes with one dip, which is also pretty spectacular. Okay, mascara complete. Now let's move on to 
my face. Oof, it is so dry here. I feel like I'm just shriveling up. I'm going to use a little bit of the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. And I've really been enjoying not putting product on my forehead because I find that with fine lines, everything just decides to sink into that. I'm gonna play out a little bit. So I've just been applying here, which might not work for everyone, but seemingly been going all right for me. I've been using the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer in Petal. It is a favorite of mine. I'll just put a little bit on and then smush it around my face with the Fenty foundation brush in 115. Now the Juice Beauty concealer in 08 cream. I also want to try out one other new product today that was really interesting to me. It is the Honest Beauty Dusk Reflection Luminizing Glow Powder. It is Oh my god, a bronzer of sorts. Try it with this Fenty Beauty 125 face brush. That's really pretty. I first tried Honest Beauty. Oh my gosh. I don't even know what year it was. Maybe 2015. I got invited to the Zoasis party during Coachella and in our gift bags. There was like a Honest Beauty facial spray of some variety. Oh, it was so nice. And exactly what you needed in the desert during Coachella because it gets so dry there, much like here. So yeah, I just recently have tried their makeup, which so far have liked everything I've tried. This luminizing bronzer is quite nice. I love the mascara. I like it. Uh, blush. I have been using the Chic Cheek to Chic Pillow Talk from Charlotte Tilbury quite a bit lately. So I'm just gonna go and use that because I have, I've been loving it. Oh my God, I just did that over top of my fucking, oh, there's just gross stuff in my tea. I'm gonna drink it anyway. There's fuzz in it too. Oh my God. Can't get between me and my tea. I just love this color, it's nice and glowy. It's like my ideal blush, I think. Perhaps I could use a little bit of highlighter. RMS, this is their signature set mod collection. Let me use this guy, Ooh. this one. See you, they sent me I don't know, the whole shebang here. I wanted to try ooh, try out an array of colors. What do we got here? Sorry Not Sorry, Date Maker, Resort Season, and Make Love to the Camera. So I will start off with the lightest one and then go to dark. So this is Date Maker, which is such a good color. Mm. They're so creamy too. Oh, my hair is doing a little weird. Curly cue over here. I think in the other video I used crossfade. Yeah, my lips are dry and I feel like since it's so creamy, it doesn't even matter. Like that's a perfectly beautiful color. Next up we have Sorry Not Sorry. Burnt orangey looking color. Ooh, yeah, stunning. That's gorgeous. In fact, I think like this is the look here. However, I'm gonna keep going just for research purposes, but I think I might go back to that color at the end. This is also a super favorite of mine, resort season. It's like this pop in orange. I really, really, really love orange lipstick. When I had super blonde hair, like how gorgeous is this orange? It's a super comfortable formula. I have worn it out before, obviously just at home. I've worn it out home. <laughs> I try not to wear lipstick when I'm wearing masks cause it just doesn't make any sense. How beautiful is this orange? 
Okay, now we're going on with this really vampy color. It reminds me of my era of wearing like train blue, train bleu from NARS, one of those lip crayons. But also who else went through a phase where they wore Diva <laughs> from MAC? It must still exist. I think I have like two tubes of it still. It was a favorite of mine, probably in 2012. <laughs> this is a nice deep uh, berry color. My one complaint about this is the applicator. So it is a doe foot and it's kind of like, oh my gosh, or you could easily, I don't know. Anyway, I just, it's not really a precision point at the end, it's more bulbous. I find it very difficult to get sharp lines. And even with a little bit of product, you could probably diffuse this very nicely as well. Oh, talk about doing your lips uneven. That's it. That's all, that's all I can tell you. The lipsticks are beautiful, but like we're wearing masks right now. So unless you're wearing them at home, wait to purchase for when you can, uh, when you get your vaccine and, and you can go about your life again. However, the eyeshadows, I'm a fan. I am. And I love, I love a single shadow. I do. That's where I stand on that. Very creamy, easy to blend. Can't complain. I'm sorry about the lighting. I feel like it keeps like changing. That about wraps that up. So thanks so much for joining me and uh, we'll see you again soon. Toodles!